it's me, Soto left open. It's the upset of the season. Melbourne have won eight in a row. Adelaide kill the streak. Back to Bryce, flick back. Eight in a row from that spot. That's ridiculous. Back out for the while at short. He's been shooting that three ball so well this season. JLA makes a pay. He's got a 30 piece for the night. Set the scene for Sunday hoops here in the Hungry Jacks NBL. Three games, and we start with Adelaide taking on the Perth Wildcats. The 36 have got some key personnel not playing today, and a very different looking starting lineup that we'll get to in just a few moments. Meanwhile, for the Perth Wildcats, they've had the chance this week to go home, sleep in their own bed, hug their loved ones, and refocus for this next stretch on the road. Hello, and welcome to Sunday Hoops at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. Jack Everett joining commentary by Corey Homer. So Williams and Andrew Gaze. And Drew, we start with the Adelaide starting lineup for DoorDash, and it does look a little different. Well, it now does, and Cam Besto's not available. Possibly been their best player all season, but uh, Kai Soto, the Filipino, he gets his first start, as does Tad Dubai for the Adelaide 36ers, and he'll hopefully be able to provide support, support for Mitch McCarran, who's doing some real heavy lifting, averaging more minutes per game than anyone in the competition. And for the uh, Perth Wildcats, they, Corey, they're, oops, they're looking fairly consistent now. They've had a bit of a slump, but they seem to be playing some good basketball based on their last outing. I'll tell you this right now. This team has recharged. They went home. This. So friends and family. They did. Time they saw their own bed. Gave them a cuddle and a kiss. Uh, they'll be ready to play today. And that man is back. Mitch Norton. He brings toughness. He brings leadership from that point guard position. The same thing that Delhi brings. Yep. And Ellie brings for Melbourne United. Let's have a listen to the coach Scott Morrison a little earlier today. He caught up with John Casey. It's been a big week for the Perth Wildcats. First time in 64 days they were able to get back home. The coach Scott Morrison is with me now. That must have been a huge relief for yourself, back to your wife and kids and all the players as well. Yeah, I mean, um, we weren't expected to be on the road that long, which made it a little bit tougher. Uh, when we left Perth, it was supposed to be a few weeks and ended up being uh, 64 days. So... It was just nice to get a break, um, get a little sense of family, and uh, recharge a little bit before we, we finish this stretch run on the road. Back on the road pretty quickly, though, and the last time you were here, Adelaide beat you when you're on top of the ladder, so you won't be taking them lightly. No, we don't take anybody lightly. I think one through ten in this league, every team is tough and capable of beating uh, the, the, the next team no matter what position they're in. So Adelaide kicked our butts last time. Uh, we had to fight to really get a, a close win to start the season against them in Perth, so it's going to be a, a dogfight, and... Uh, we're going to have to really earn our, our, our good looks on the offensive end and, and uh, our stops in the defensive end. And a shout out to our Kmart Game Time Ball Kit for today, Farida, who's part of our Sunday Hoops coverage as well. Welcome, Farida, as we're set to go at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. As we mentioned, the first of three games, the 36ers haven't lost four in a row this season. They're at risk of finding that stat today if they can't. Manufacture a result. The Wildcats, let's see what a bit of an emotional freshen up for them during the week can do. Cotton, top of the key. Normal service resumes. Well, that's huge. Bryce Cotton, this has not been a happy hunting ground for Bryce Cotton. This venue at Adelaide Entertainment Centre, from the three point line, in his four games here, he's four of 27, which is outrageous for a man of his capabilities. Only a 14.8% from the field, so he'll feel good about seeing that three ball go in. And Johnson coming off a career high night on Friday, uh, season high night, I should say, on Friday. McCarran takes that ball out of bounds. And for the LA 36ers, Corey, when you look at this lineup and not starting their two imports. That it wouldn't have been the plan when they put this team together. No, it wouldn't. And I would be offended if I was these imports. And that's just giving them more motivation to come out in this game and be better when they get a chance to play. That's not a good start. This is an ominous start. It looked 
pretty easy so far, of course, when you see that first three ball go in. And this is contested with the foul. And you see Withers, he's uh, coming off the bench. I guess the theory behind this, like I said in the opener, is to try and give Mitch McCarron a little help. Sunday, Dench has been really good at guarding Bryce Cotton. And it sounds good in theory, but when you've got your two imports who are trying to find some scoring and firepower coming off the bench, that can, like you mentioned, Corey, can just be a little rattling. Yeah, yeah, it, it can fire them up. But, you know, the reality is, is lack of consistency has them in that situation. They'll be coming in in every game, producing and will be on that bench. For the Wildcats in the first 90 seconds of the game. Listen, they slept in their beds. They've recharged. They've 64 the days on the road. There must be some comfort in those beds then, because this has been really good. And DJ's been in some really good form. He's averaged 21 and 10 in their two games so far against the Adelaide 36ers. And coming off that 10 of 13 outing against the Phoenix. As Majul throws that one away. Soto on the move. Took it down the lane and that will be an offensive foul. Pretty straightforward one. Soto just a little out of control. He was trying to statue a liberty of it with the uh, ball and just come down and perhaps flush one. That's good D. You sacrifice your body, Corey. Yes, as Mitch Norton usually does. Ooh, but those knees come up. Can get a little difficult and t t test your commitment to taking that shot. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Game number 150 today for Mitchell. Two time NBL champion. Oh, one place, right time. Soto did well to change the shot. Great opportunity today for Kai Soto, Corey. And the way the round has been going so far for these next stars showing out. I expect him to take full advantage of this opportunity. Third meeting of the season between these two teams. They played in round one at RAC Arena in Perth. Wildcats winning that one 85-73. And then in round seven, Adelaide, a superb victory, 87-74. Right here at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. They will play once more. Round 16 at RAC Arena. Do for Meyer. All out of control there. And Norton back in the team today for Blanchfield. Second oh, mate three. Oh, wow. He's been in a slump, Todd Blanchfield. He's only averaging five and a half points in his past four games. And he's come out and knocked down his first couple of trifectas. And this is going to test the Adelaide 36ers this start when things aren't going well. How committed you can be. Let's Sixes can reset McCarran. Two 
Wolfelmeyer feeds Johnson, who turns and shoots. That misses everything. Well, it's good defense. A lot of ball pressure. You can see the active hands and Todd Blanchfield oh, just did one of those silly moves where the ring starts to look like a hula hoop and everything he throws up, he's feeling good about himself right now. That's three for three. Nine points to start it off for Todd Blanchfield. Fantastic start for Todd, especially coming off inconsistent play that he's been in yeah. lately. So it's a great sign for him and the Wildcats. McCarron, wide open. He's short. And for me right now, you need to get Dusty Hannes into this game because offensively, you don't have that many much more weapons on the court. Exactly. We're on two points for the first five minutes. We can understand. <laughs> Come on now. Let's get to it, Gage. What are y'all here to do? <laughs> they need to pick it up, Officer. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. And they, uh, I think that they clearly have got an emphasis on the defense and and, you, and even another substitution. And still, Dusty doesn't see the floor. It's Mojave King checking in. But Adelaide, who have just two points. And it's not getting any better for them. One of ten to start this game. Meanwhile, Perth are five of seven. And looks slick on Sunday hoops. The Lord falling away on McCarran. Here is the Adelaide captain. Takes the bump from Cop. And that's strategic foul. They did that well to avoid the unsportsmanlike. And Perth fans and I'm sure Scott Morrison would be, would be wrapped in this. Ten of their games this season, they've trailed it by ten in the first half. They've had they've had these patches, particularly early on, where they've been poor, the Perth Wildcats. But they've, uh, I think they would have spoken about that because you can't keep giving teams that type of an advantage, and they've shown today. And there's a good little flex cut and almost a three-point play by the Adelaide 36ers, but I'm sure it's something that Perth have been talking about because they rectified that problem. They've probably got another win or two in there. There's Cam Besto. Just some illness has struck him now, and that is a big, big, big blow. Recruit of the season, in my view, Cam Short, Besto. Recruit of the season. He's had an exceptional year. He's been their best player and most consistent this season. Yanni Wetzel in that conversation. Right out ball. The problem with Yanni is of the season. he was so good last season. So he, he's improved and he's been fantastic. But when you're at that level, Cam Besto is someone that no one wanted. And not because of his skill sets, but just because of the injury problems he's had throughout the course of his career. And Travis. Uncle Fraser onto the court. Trying to get himself going. That pass, a little ambitious for Wagstaff, and here goes McCarran. And Johnson hands off to Mojave. King steps back for three. It's no good. They just cannot cut a break. Right now, the Adelaide 36ers, one of 11, 0 of 5 from threes. And with not, a, not putting points on the board, it puts too much pressure on your defense. This team is rolling right now. Oh, man. Oh, Five of six from outside to start the game as Cotton makes his second three. This by far is their best start in the first quarter. And as you talked about, the struggles mm. early all season with yeah. the Wildcats. Absolutely. I'm not sure blazing away. Half their shots have come from the three-point line. They're 0 of six. Cotton dancing into the paint. Pass off Wagstaff last. Todd Blanchfield with three made threes in a quarter for the first time this season. It with four points on the board. Lack of offense, obviously. One of 12 from the field. How is Dusty Hannes not in the game? Another guy that can create off the dribble. Well, that's right, particularly when you're struggling on the defensive end. So the only way in these circumstances, they're white hot, five or six from the three-point line. That's exceptional shooting. The only way you deal with that is you, you, you've got to try and keep scoring, keep the scoreboard ticking over. So I know Dusty's had his critics on the defensive end, but right now they'd be looking to find a way to get some offense going, and he's an answer for that. Well, that's come off the head. So I reckon that review is going to go the way of the Perth Wildcats because that looked... Well, this is a coach's challenge, Joey. So Perth are challenging this call. Yeah, exactly. And they're going to win. You think that's come off a score of Daniel Johnson, do you? 
It certainly looked like it. Am yeah. I seeing things? No, I, I don't know. It looked like it comes <laughs> straight off the ponds. Have a look here. Bang, bang, bang. And I don't think... <laughs> There was any further contact there after that with Wagstaff. So I wonder what our international viewers are thinking right now as we've just got scone and bots into the conversation in the last 10 seconds. I don't think Corey knows what we're talking about. Uh, Corey's a cold, he's a strong. I don't think Corey knows what we're talking about. Uh, Corey's a cold, he's a strong. I don't think Corey knows what we're talking about. Uh, Corey's a cold, he's a strong. Uh, that's uh, that's the. Uh, that is a food. Yeah, it's, it's a food. like a bread type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but the scone is also the bots. Oh, all right. For all you. The three K Z. That's wrong, explain. Maybe people in other states aren't aware of the three K. It's like having ostentatious in commentary this afternoon. Perth get the ball back and the challenge was successful. Travis, well short on his three. Travis is another one. Right now there's a lot of scouts. And we've heard it mentioned on the commentary already. A lot of scouts in Australia right now to have a look at the next stars. And Luke Travis would be also coming under the scrutiny. In fact, the San Antonio Spurs sent a guy out to their last game. And there's Willis in the offense finally for the three point line. Interesting article during the week, Kate Pittman from ESPN spoke with Danny Mills, the general manager of the Wildcats, on a number of subjects, but he said how exciting it is for Perth to have Luke Travis. It's Wagstaff had Frazier back door, now Law misses on the three. How exciting it is for them to be able to nurture a potential NBA prospect and be part of the journey for Luke Travis. Yeah, he's, he's got the athleticism. It's that shot that right now is not falling. It's not a broken shot. Stitch goes in for the little short chippy, and the other late 36ers start to get that scoreboard ticking over. Travis's shot's not broken. It just needs a, a repetition, a lot of work into it, and that'll naturally get better. Touch. It's one thing to have a good technique. It's the touch that sometimes takes a little while to... And I was saying his technique's perfect, but it is certainly not broken. And you can see how they would look beyond that. And although his shooting numbers this season, Luke Travis, aren't off the charts, they would feel that with that stroke that they'd be able to get that to a higher level. Here he is. Tom McKean Frazier. That's the mismatch down low. It misses with Juke and Juke all together. Here's a stat. Plus minuses can be a little misleading, but here's a stat on Frazier that's not good. During the past four games, Perth, with him on the floor, they're minus 52. With him on the bench, they're plus 48. So the last four games haven't been good to Michael Frazier as he tries to find his way and still developing a role. Chuck did well to keep Soto off the glass. Frazier. Chuck reeled that in. Foul will be on the floor. Todd with us. sitting down. Jamie Perlman coaching Adelaide again today. CJ Bruton, the coach, is in COVID protocols at the moment. Blanchfield knocks down another one. That's four threes in the opening quarter. Yeah, he's... When he gets in these grooves, that's just, as we mentioned, the last four games only averaging the five points, but... Any given night, he can explode, and that's what he's doing here in Adelaide. And there's that scoring you're talking about on the side. That's what we wanted to see. At least he's in the game now, producing. First field goal on his first attempt. And that man, it is a beautiful thing to watch when he is in the zone. Any shooter, but when Todd Lynchfield. That's 14 of the 23 points. This is how you find your way out of the funk. So, kept it in. Shot clock at five for McCarran. Hannes is going to be forced to do a tough shot. And they 
Taxi. And Dusty, when he first came here, we all expected him to be the three points was going to be his strength, but and, it, and he can knock down the three ball, but what he is not, he's not that flat out three point shooter that we thought he was going to be. He's all oh, oh my hey, goodness. Second. Todd Blanchfield cooking, doing something special. 16 in the first. Deary me. That's a bad turnover. Blanchfield's up ahead. Travis finds him. Blanchfield fouled. And he'll go to the free throw line for two. 16 points on six of six shooting That's in nice. six minutes of play. <laughs> wow. He has uh, been way too open. He's been able to catch and shoot. Comes off those little curls in. Made that big range. This time is at the end of the transition. But just getting back to Dusty and how he's more now in a trailer. Those low floaters getting into the paint, in the traffic. And I think it's a fact that here with Australia, they're able to get out and extend the defense. And he needs a bit of time to get his three ball off. And he's not a bad gunner like we thought he was going to be. And he's uh, adjusted well to be able to create Tom Blanchfield. This is something special. Averaging nine and a half points a game. He's got 17 and a quarter. Wildcats lead by 13. Dufelmeyer, nice take. That'll be good for his confidence. Here we go for the Very strong finish into the basket. Yeah, they, they got to, Adelaide have got to weather this storm. They, they, they need to pick up their defense, absolutely. And here we see Dufelmeyer get in the cup. They need to pick up their defense. Uh, no doubt about it, but some of these shots you're going to live with because yeah. they're just in that frame of mind where they're, they're white, white hot. So you, you've got to weather this storm, keep it as tight as you can. And they've been able to find the answer the last three or four minutes on the offensive end. It's true. Travis pulls the trigger. That's not good. Like and that. I, I think right now, when you know that there are NBA people and you know the take on him is that, well, perimeter shooting is perhaps not his strength. It's almost like he's, he's out there trying to prove us all that he can do. And there's Tanner's. He's a miss. Three of three from the field. Game. They should have put him in the game early. Well, we're all geniuses in hindsight. <laughs> I, think, I think that he uh, has certainly shown what he's capable of doing on the offensive end. Travis got Johnson in the air. So tight, man, into the summit. And fouls. Great attack to the basket. He was going up to finish aggressive. Kai Soto met him upstairs. He gets fouled. He goes to the line for two. Yeah, coming off after he just had the three ball, and he just, he's already missed two, and Soto goes up straight hands. And gee, on the replay, Soto might have been a little unlucky on that one. Good adjustment by Travis. It was a good adjustment. DJ went out like he hit his last two shots. Yeah. The scout report on him is soft close up. And correct. So DJ <laughs> in hindsight got Soto his second bite. <laughs> DJ did have the short close out, but the, the feet just weren't as active as they needed to be. And they're sliding and stopping that baseline drive. 3.2 seconds left. There's a foul call here on Perth, That's which right. is yeah, going to be well. bonus free throws yeah. for Adelaide on the quarter time buzzer. That's the best one. Got him tip right there. Wow. Right there. Yeah. Didn't see where the foul was from. They've caught it on top Blanchfield. Well, off to a slow start, Adelaide, they picked it up offensively. They did? Yeah. Well, they were just terrific. They were 1 of 11, and they end up making their, well, 6 out of their, their next 8 shots. So they started really poorly and put the ball in the hoop. For them to be potentially hits this down 7 points, mm. they'd be happy with that. Dusty Hannah's off the bench with, with 6. Best Wildcats 
Hearts are in front and quarter time for just the second time in their last 10 games. But if you're an Adelaide supporter, it could have been a whole lot worse. They're only down seven after one on Sunday Hoops in the Hungry Jacks and here. time on Sunday hoops at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. The Perth Wildcats shot the lights out. Todd Blanchfield on fire in the opening quarter with 17 points, the best of any player in a first quarter in this season. But Adelaide have managed to hang in there. The winner of our $50 Kmart gift card, Maddie Roach. Maddie loves playing basketball for her school team with her friends and is still celebrating being back-to-back -back champs. How good is that, Maddie? And she also goes for the Wildcats. She needs a little work on the between the dribble, between the legs <laughs> dribble, though. You've got to keep those feet planted on the floor and just cross it through the middle of the legs and away you go. But, uh, no, nah, it's a beauty. She's a beauty. Corey, I'd say Adelaide would take a seven-point deficit at quarter time, wouldn't they? Yeah, they would, especially with that slow start. First five minutes of that game, it was, wasn't looking good at both ends. Points on two or three so far. Pass underneath for Norton. That's how you just create off the dribble. We're talking about Hannah's not starting again this second quarter after he gets going. They decide to make a change. Don't, well, don't, don't take your headset off. And the same stay with Corey, on, stay. Same with Withers. Oh. Which is. I don't understand. That's the guy that came off the bench and gave you a spark. Gave you a spark. for three. Not that time. Manny Malou out there starting the second quarter. Two for one. The starting line on today. Malou hands off to Dead. Shot clock at ten. She wants to bank it home. Loose ball falls to Johnson. Or do well to not give away a foul. And we see this a lot with the Perth Wildcats more recently where they go with this really small lineup, and it puts a lot of pressure on the defense because there's so many shooters out in the floor, so many guys that can put it on the deck and create shots off the bounce. And where you might be able to exploit it is down the other end. And with DJ...
right up and Vic Law 3 is always going to be pretty high percentage. And I'm not sure. Oh, he looks like he can put him in the iron. He has. Yep. Oh, no. The, it's either the pork pie or the Tom Boulder. It's because uh, he looked like he was using the shot. Can you, can you, can you explain that? that? I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I'm back I'm over with Corey. <laughs> it's a Katie <laughs> arriving. <laughs> so high. <laughs> Uh, didn't look too serious though, so hopefully it's not. Oh, Harris into the game. On the scoreboard straight away. Good hustle by the young fella. Providing some activity on the old boards. Here's the look. Manny Malou. Couldn't quite see what it was. Everyone just got a bit caught up. I think it might be. Pie. Yeah, poor pie. That's the one. Steps back. On two for my foul. Oh, man. Wait, what? Let's have another look here. Bottom left of your screen. Name will lose left. Uh, Bang. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as painful as that is, it's... We all worry about concussions and head injuries, so that can, but if it's just that little stinger that you get, you might like, oh, yeah, you've got a bit of a shiner there, so... Hopefully it's just one of those little stingers that hasn't rattled the cage too much so we can see him back out here. It's definitely blown up, though, that eye. Look at that. Mm. Look at the cut man in the boxing team. They still have that. 34-24 <laughs> on Sunday. Hoops still to come today. Sydney and Cairns up next. Kudos Bank Arena, the Kings are red hot right now. I think they're your new team, aren't they, Corey? The Sydney Kings? They are my new team. My favorite player is on that team. Two of them. Who's your other one? Jalen Adams. And Cooks. Mr. Hannes back in. Another offensive rebound by Hiram Harris. Couldn't finish that time. You've got to be pretty stiff to have not been Corey's player of the month. Some stage over the end of the season or the last few years, he, he tends to just jump on and appreciate when people are going through a hot spell I and they become his team. You play good, I talk good. That's it. You play different, I talk different. I like it. And they have the easiest road. They do. They do. A lot of a lot of road games. Oh, okay. one of eleven from outside. Three ball not happening for them. It's certainly happening for the league's best player. Listen, he is so difficult to defend. He'll catch you on your back foot, he can pull up. You guard him tight, he can get around you. Draw help, he dishes. Eight of 14 now from the three-point line for the Perth Wildcats. 11 for Cotton. 17 for Blanchfield. It's Norton downhill. Feeds Majuk Majuk. All three throws coming. He's checking courtside with John Casey. Thanks, Jack. Yeah, I just spoke with the um, support staff of the Perth Wildcats. Vic Law is okay. He's just taken a knock to the eye, but he's passed all the concussion protocols that they ran through with him. Um, and he's uh, he said he's fine, so he's moved back up to the top of the bench, and he should be able to come back into the game. Just on Mike Kelly, the assistant coach. Obviously, he's just returned from uh, representing as assistant coach for the Boomers. And... Great to be back in the fold with the Perth Wildcats and congratulate Mike and Kyle Zunick as well from the Wildcats who was part of that team that did so well in those World Cup qualifiers. Yeah, they looked good, the young boomers, didn't they? Kyle Zunick out there in the lineup today. Yep, they did. And uh, so did some of the veterans they had around him. Nick Kay was really sharp. And Reese Vague. Reese Vague, he's improved as a player. Did yeah. some things. And what well under Coach Beveridge as well. Rob Beveridge did a great job of putting that team together with very limited penetration. And Daniel Johnson, they're not going to give him the continuation. They're saying the foul was before he collected the ball and picked it up. So that'll be from the side. Let's have a look. Majuk, Majuk. There's a the foul. Ooh, we probably wouldn't have been arguing too much if it had accounted. Always one close ones. Withers gets inside, misses from close range, gets another opportunity. Now Hannah's high off the glass, he misses as well. Nine of 
33. And the Adelaide 36 is from the field. Frazier turns the corner. It's pass for Norton. Good look. Doesn't knock it down. 39-24 at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. The Wildcats can drop to fifth if they lose today. Cotton crosses over. A little slow to get up, so Adelaide had the extra number up the floor. Oh, dear. Not now they don't. There's Bryce. Oh. Still got a little bounce in those legs. Went home, recharged in the bed. Excuse me? What'd you say? Recharged in the bed. It's the whole thing, man, when you go home. I think mean, you're referring to the nice, comfy dinner and the... 100%. Just up a nice lift. With the two hands. Ray still got bounce. That is just a really, really poor pass, though. You're coming down, you've got a new numerical advantage. But this man here, Top Lanshill, set the tone early. Six of six from the field. Four of four from the land of plenty. Came out and set the tone in this first quarter. Always nice when your first couple are wide open. That's a little bit more contested, but you've already got yourself going. And then the more difficult, quick ones become a whole lot easier. And you see each and every one of these... Notice the common element, not once did he have to put the ball on the floor and shoot it off the bounce. It's all catch and shoot stuff and 17 points and just the free time is the only glitch in his shooting this afternoon. He has a capacity to do both. As we've seen in the last couple of games, the capacity just to lose his way a little bit yeah. and perhaps be prepared to defer to others and then also when he starts to get on a roll he's one of the toughest to stop he's got good size six eight six seven six eight so you put someone small on him to run around and close him out and he can just shoot over the top of him you spoke about his form in the last four games zero seven seven and eight today he has 17 in the first half Hannes. Two more. He's Adelaide's leading scorer with eight points. Off the bench. Giving him that scoring punch. First at the turnover. His hands from Ditch. With us, catch and shoot three. Nothing happening downtown for Adelaide. One of 13 from the three. Another stop. For Ditch. That jumps out. Adelaide win it back. Hannah's at the top of the key. His shooting rolls continue. Perth give it back. Ditch. Thank goodness. <laughs> Two of 16 now for the Adelaide 36. I'm on under for one in. Well, the thing about it is, is that. You've got to get to a point where you've got to put the cue in the rack for a, for a period of time and look at other options. They just haven't been successful. Now, this one coming off the turnover, Ditch wide open, and he knocks it down. But the successes they've had have come when they've run a little bit of action, a bit of off-the-ball movement, move the players around, and then get the penetration. Let's see what Scobo's got to say. That's all right, that's... Okay. Assuming DJ's on you. Mitch has the ball. Bringing it down, you're in a bolt. Okay, now Bryce, as he's bolting like this, you're going to try and flare DJ. He's going to be behind him. He's going to be, he's going to be trailing him, okay? But he's going to respect the shot. So boom. Boom, Vicky over here. Jesse's down. Okay, if you see Mitch attacking, stay space. You're here, Bryce is getting you. Yeah, shot here. Yes. You can go hand out the tunnel over here if you want. Right, hey, we need, to, we need that same spot. Pretty calm and composed, the Wildcats. 41 29. 344 to play before half time on Sunday Hoops.
21-29. Third meeting of the season between these two teams. Tasmania due to concussion protocols. Cotton up top. Nothing but cotton. That's right. And what a weapon it is. And just a very, really not a lot of action. Five out and a couple of little crossovers by Cotton and just steps into an easy three. Same defensively, just run him off it. Take the odds to him getting hot going to the rim in twos. Take something away from him. Now, easier said than done, but... See this. Another three. Con highly contested. Are they aware that they're two of 17? <laughs> Ross crosses over, hand in the face. Same result. First quarter, Blanchfield. Second quarter, my turn. <laughs> 19 points in 12 minutes. That man is on fire, Gabe. Five made threes for Bryce Cotton. Well, I don't like that. Wildcats are on fire. Ten of 17 from the three-point line. That's their seventh turnover, though. That's probably the only thing that won't please Scott Morrison. Carrot. Hannes, who gave up his look. Johnson pops into the corner. Off target. Long rebound, McCarron. Dents for three. In comparison to everyone else, he's hot. He is. From outside. And the last two he's made have come off second shots. And they're the hardest ones. You, got, you, you crash the boards, an extra pass. Doesn't matter what they do on the offensive end. They're going to find a way to slow this Perth Wildcats team down. Already at 47. Hello. That's the 13th offensive rebound, Corey. Adam. Doing a hell of a job on the those old boys. Hannes. Cut under the basket. Threw it away, McCarron. Scores. That's how you make something out of nothing. Broken offense. He drives baseline, finds Mitch, and Mitch It's a tough mid-range. Back-to-back -back triples. Adelaide shooting three of twenty from three. Somehow Dusty finds Mitch, and Mitch gets that mid-range off the one leg. He brings it back to thirteen. It is. And every time I see one down there. I want to get on the glass, just keep coming over the top so I don't get those bust outs, okay? Johnson on the box. 
with Mitch Norton. Now, we know he's a warrior, but there's a huge size mismatch and the craftiness of Daniel Johnson. Just figure out a way to go to that mismatch. Get him the ball on the box. And Norton, quick play. Two for one opportunity for Perth. He's got free throws coming. Signed a new three-year deal in the off-season, Mitch Norton. So he's going to be a long-term part of this franchise now. He should. There's a lot of interest from other teams, Corey. He's put his work in. He's an exceptional guard. Brings exactly to this club what Shaley and Matthew Donovan Dolby brings from Melbourne United. Quality pickup. And he's learned a little bit. Gave him one. the second. The lead is 14. Withers. McCarran. Download to Johnson. Shot clock at eight. Withers gave up his three ball for Dench. Unsuccessful offensive rebound. Johnson blocked by Travis. He by Luke. He's caught a couple of legs on the way through now, Law, with three seconds remaining. Florida goes! Vic Law on the halftime buzzer gives Perth their biggest halftime lead of the season. 16 points. They are in control of this one. Well, they certainly are, and for the life of me, I, I can't understand the Adelaide 36 is just continuing to blaze away from the three-point line, where they are three of 22. And they need to make some adjustments and find a better balance, because it's just not seeming to fall this one this afternoon. Let's get the case. Tom Mansfield, crazy start to the game. You were feeling it there in the first quarter? Yeah, for sure. It's nice to have extra shots. It's nice to have all the court. He played some consistent games. You know, it's been a bit up and down this year with injury, but, you know, obviously to give up 40 in the second quarter is uh, striking our target. What's going to be key in the second half? You know how they're going to come back at you. For sure. You know, they're the best offensive route game team in the league for a reason. They crash hard into possession. So I think for the most part, we've been pretty good. But, you know, I think that's going to be a big focus of theirs going into the second half. Boys on commentary have made a point about being home and recharging. Do you feel a little more energised after getting back to the friends and family? For sure, you know, it's, it's a little things like, you know, little guys with kids wake up, see their kids in the morning, guys, you know, partners, wives at home, you know, get to spend some time with loved ones. So definitely a recharge and it's, you know, back on the road after two days, but, you know, it's a small recharge, but it's better than nothing. Great first half. Good luck in the second. Oh, thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Top Lanchfield there. The Wildcats have this on their terms well and truly. They scored the first nine points of the game and at halftime they enjoy a 16-point buffer. We've got more Hungry Jacks and NBL from the Adelaide Entertainment Centre coming at you just in a moment.
back to the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. The 36 is down 16 at the moment. Coach Jamie Perlman, you're dominating the O-boards at the moment. You just can't get those second chance points. Yeah, look, I, I feel like I've had a ton of open threes as well that just aren't going down right now. I feel like we're collapsing the defence, the ball's coming out. I think we're getting some good looks, not enough going down, but well, the biggest thing for me right now is one-on-one -on -one accountability defensively. It's like, you know, Cotton gets one hot, well, then we're going to deny him. We're going to play him tight, and we're going to make him put it on the floor. You know, Blaine's still got hot. Did we make that mental switch? You know, that, OK, we're really going to get into this guy and so take some stuff away. So it's that one-on-one -on -one accountability right now that we're lacking. Appreciate your time. Good luck. They've got some work to do, the 36ers. Perth, on the other hand, their second highest first half of the season. They put 51 on Sydney in round 12 and actually lost that game. It's today, 50 at the half. Looks pretty good. And unfortunately for the 36ers, as per the stat man, Mark Slocum, the absolute best in the business, Adelaide have had 50 put on them at the half six times this season. Yeah. And the thing about Adelaide's three-point shooting, where they're three of 22, they actually shoot less threes than anyone else in the competition. They only average 23 a game, and they've already had 22 in the first half. And Jamie Pearl was right. Some of them are wide open looks that's just not going in. But if they're not, then you've really got to think of the alternatives like that. Find a way. Now, OK, they missed. We'll get another shot at it. But rather than just continuing to blaze away, Try and change the momentum, gets the scoreboard ticking over other ways before you go back to that three-point shot. And there is just a bad closeout. Yeah, you've got to be conscious of Vic Raw, but Withers just flops on him and goes to the line to shoot three. Let's get caught side of John Casey. Yeah, we've noticed Adelaide 36 has started top with us here at the beginning of the second half. Now that's because Kai Soto is not able to go at the moment. He suffered a cork thigh, and they're trying to keep him moving and on the bike and getting things done here to keep him warm. But the longer this goes, the tougher it's going to be to get him back into the caper. Just saw him in the background there. Thank you, Case. Has got that right leg heavily strapped. See him there again. Not much fun, the old cork. No, they, uh, they can be very uncomfortable. Usually the next day when you feel it the worst at the time, you go, oh, gee, that's nasty. And you just, you just sort of play through it and then right. you wake up the next morning. And that's when it really kicks in. Big Law makes all three. Third Wildcats player in a double figures. Cotton has 19. Lanchfield 17. And now Law with 11 on the back of 37 when they played in round one. 16 and 14. Oh, beautiful. And played in round seven. Nice spin from Dufalon. Beautiful ball. He has the ability to create off the dribble. He's a bit crafty with the ball, as we just seen. Give and go play. Sees an easy bucket for Norton. He demands so much coverage and attention. Cotton. All you have to do is cut. He will find you. Woes continue from the land of plenty. Three of 23. It's not plenty for them. Johnson on the move. It's a nice bounce. As we mentioned earlier, they do a, they're doing a really good job on the old boards. That's 16 offensive rebounds. 55 38. Still early stages in the third quarter. Up next on Sunday Hoops, we need the Kudos Bank Arena. Sydney take on Cairns. And Machuk, Machuk in a milestone game today. Number 150, also his 50th as a Perth Wildcat. Started today and will have that opportunity for at least the next couple of weeks. Matt Hodgson not playing with a calf is listed as a tentative return date of March 20. And knocks down his sixth treble. That's one man. You cannot go under. No, you can't. Ever. And for a man who's had nothing but problems at this venue, in fact, when he's playing there, in nine games, the only one, he's only on here twice. But had he shot poorly in this venue, he's certainly eradicated any of those problems. That is a fact. Better late than never. 
Another offensive rebound. Another missed three ball. Three of 25. 15 of 56. Norton unsuccessful at the other end. And on the flip side, it's 11 of 20 for the Perth Wildcats, where they've been really good. And these threes. sets take those threes when you're shooting this poorly collectively from the three-point line. You know, you never want to go gun shy. It just comes down to when you're going to take those threes. Hiram Harris. McCarron got into the paint. Finish from underneath. This work from Johnson. Fantastic work by Adelaide on the offensive rebounds. They're up to 18. That's ridiculously high. They've got more offensive rebounds than defensive ones. Yeah, and a field goal attempt. Field, field goals made. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And they're only shooting at 27% this time. These types of opportunities, I think, are going to be there for them. With this small lineup, someone like DJ, and even when Winners is in the game, uh, to get on the boards. They are the number one offensive rebounding team in the competition, but no Cam Bears, though, for them. Today, as we check in with John Casey. Yeah, the students of the game would notice that Daniel Johnson's free throw shooting technique has changed this season. There was a hitch with the ball sliding out to the right there in his preparation. Now, I spoke with him pre-game and he said, yes, he has changed it. And his percentage, well, coming into this season, he was 86% last season. He's 82% this season. So, what's well, gone down just a tad, I think you'd be in the 80s. Well, you take that every day of the week. Be happy with the 80s, would you, Corey? Yeah, I definitely didn't shoot 80. So about, uh, That's not what I thought about. 70. I don't know, maybe about 74, 73. Stat man. Help a brother out. Do you want him to? Yeah. Do for my brother. Yeah. He's given them something today to do for my playing starters minutes. He's two of six, has three rebounds. He's got four. Travis, nice take. Real nice take off the dribble. But it's that is, we heard Jamie Bellman talking at halftime as well. It's just about how they're going to guard this penetration. And that, by Luke Travis, is a relatively easy one. Offense. Quite 24. It's possible. And it's, it's just the fundamentals of the defense there. Slide your feet, keep in front, keep going to the sideline. But just a simple catch and rip through puts a lot of pressure on your rotations and getting that weak side help which there was virtually none on that last drive by Travis here's a little 2-3 zone it's by the Perth Wildcats McCarran gets out to rattle home he's had a few jump out of the cylinder today Nice to take the defense, had to work hard, but he was still able to create off of that spin move. That offensive foul on Law. And they get a stop. And if a couple of these threes go down, this will change the, per the, the per per perplexity of this game. Yes, and uh, here's the thing. 18 of 61 at 29 cents, so they've had 61 field goal attempts as opposed to 34. And yeah, there's been some free throws in there. They've had 14 free throws, but not to the level we'd be thinking. Oh, there's a, another three that comes up short. At some point, these threes are going down. If you keep getting this level of disparity between, with your field goal attempts, <laughs> Hopefully, you'd like to think that some of them come would eventually drop. And you get right back in this ball game quick, but 
Not with defense like that. They're so patient. So patient offensively. Well, I'm sorry to hit the nail on the head, but they're unselfish. Even with these superstars on the team. And yeah. Clocked down to seven. Malou fires from the corner. It's good. There's like that. three seconds left on you. We've explored it, all the other options, and you're happy to settle for that that type of three ball. See, Dusty Hannes about to check back in in the scorer's table. All right, so I have a question. What is your question? Dusty Hannes has been this far off the bench in this game. Is this the first time we're seeing him in this in this third quarter? With three and a half left. That's Why correct. would that be? Well, uh, the only explanation I can think of is perhaps you're, you're thinking what we've got to do on the defensive end and how you might be feeling a little vulnerable defensively. But right now, I think that they, they're almost going to trade trade off on that. If even if. Uh, He's got to do a better job, of course, but you almost trade off on that when you, you're struggling to find points. Here's Jamie Perlman, standing coach for CJ Bruton. This Kyle Zunick has checked into the game for his first minutes. He's recently returned from Australian Junies from the Young Boomers team. With that foul, Perth are over the limit. So Adelaide shoots two. And this right now is a great opportunity for Adelaide to get points, a penetrate and get your feet in the paint to draw fouls to get to the free throw line. Absolutely. And given what we're seeing, we can kind of look at the scoreboard and it's, although it's still a sizable margin with those 14 points, the way the game has been played out, you would think that Perth Wildcats would have a much, much bigger lead, but it's still very much within touch for the Adelaide 36ers. Perth in action next on Thursday. To start round 15, they take on Melbourne at John Kane Arena. What an enormous start to the round that's going to be. The Adelaide 36 is they'll play New Zealand in Tasmania on Saturday. You shot better than me. I shot 67% from the free, free throw. I've had that sitting here waiting. Oh. Harvey King's first points of the game. It's Norton downhill. Oh, puts it back in. Hannes to the other end. Nice finish. He's really good around the basket in, in, in making sure that he avoids the heavy traffic and seems to be able to get off reasonable shots in that heavy traffic. That time caught Norton on the arm. These are the times when Michael Fraser has got to step up, particularly on the offensive end. If he's ever going to, that's a good release. Just knew the defense was coming, held it out wide enough and kisses it off the glass softly. But when Bryce Cotton's not on the floor, then now is the time for him to be more active on the offensive end. Mansfield had 17 in the opening quarter. Hasn't scored since then. Steps out. Three misses. Foul over the back from Machuk, Machuk. Just a little bit of momentum starting to go Adelaide's way here. And now they walk 94 feet to shoot two free throws. And to bring the lead back to single digits. So it's... Here with the strike distance. A little bit of nervous time now for the Perth Wildcats. They, their shooting's gone off the ball ever so slightly. And with Adelaide finding other opportunities to, to score. And the rebounding's just becoming... An issue for the Perth Wildcats, 32 
to 24. They trail that category. That category can have incredible 19 offensive rebounds with still a quarter of 223 to play. What a single digit game. Very important. 223 left in this quarter for both teams. Manny Maroon's played some good minutes off the bench. It's a 16 point lead at half time for Perth. Adelaide have fought their way back in despite their shooting stats. They've hung around and they get another stop. And it's turnover number 10 in the game for the Wildcats. That man has re entered. Yep. I think when it gets down to nine and they've got the ball, I, I would imagine that Scott Morrison was hoping to be able to get up until quarter time, three quarter time, that type of rest for Bryce Cotton, but it's starting to get a little bit more concerning. Blue out of control. Nice team from Norton. He's caught. Travis in the corner. This can reset through Norton. Got downhill. Beautiful drop off pass for Mitchell. His ability to just head full of steam, penetrate, draw the defense and dishes it off. Big fella to get an easy two. Back out to 11. Well, no time for Hannes. Harvey King trying to stop Cotton. See the foul. Adelaide's fourth of the corner. See, that's smart play by Bryce Cotton. He's got the rookie on him. Relatively rookie. And he just drives in him. And unfortunately, I mean, there is not a lot in that. He was just... A little stiff. Oh, that one was King. So now I want to test him. Oh my goodness. Call a foul on Withers on that? I think that foul is on. Maybe it wasn't on King. Was it wasn't on King. I was going to say that was on Withers either. It was on King. On King. Definitely on King. Look at that. It looked like a soft foul. Come and he knows he's got Bajuk Bajuk down low. Two, that's just really good offense by Bryce Cotton. As soon as he came into the game, it was a nine point game. As soon as he came into the game, one pass, big yeah. ball, and one. He gets a bucket. He's plus 23 for a reason. And he creates. <laughs> he's, he's got the. Actually, we should be sure plus 25, so he's got the highest, but right next to him is Bryce Cotton at plus 24, and you're spot on. Look at the score line now. He's, he's, it's a nine-point game, and he comes in and just makes something happen. Shot clock winding down to 10 for the Wildcats. Hannes is deserted on Cotton Island. And that is a lonely, lonely place. <laughs> it sure is. It is. And, and, and right there, you saw it. You see that he's giving him choice. You hear Jamie Fallon saying, get on his left. 
and you should be so far on that left that right. he's got to step back or he's got to do something miraculous to shoot a three. And you're not conceding the penetration, but you're you're saying, well, that's the lesser of two evils. Let's get him inside the three-point line and make him make a tough one or that extra pass just to get it out of his hands. But when he's got those types of choices to create that three ball, it's he's proven over a long period of time it's too hard to stop no, on the side. On an island like that, you're playing flat. So it's too good. You at his mercy. He sits down. He went to 19. His work here. He was done. just his work here. Is done. Done. <laughs> <laughs> he changed the game in two minutes. Sunday hoops in the Hungry Jacks NBL. The third place Perth Wildcats are flexing their muscle. They lead by 16 at three quarter time. Adelaide got it back inside single figures, but Ross Cotton came back into the game, said, I'll take care of this, and gave them a double digit lead coming into the last. He just showed brilliance in about a minute and a half. Yep. Just took control. It's either with the pass or the shot. And again, when they get a bit of a buffer, they trying to find some rest for Bryce Cotton. Good little slip there. They find the bucket. Find, excuse me, find the foul in the, the shot. But there's a lot of remarkable things with the Adelaide 36. First and foremost, they've got 70 field goal attempts. Uh, most games are around, what, the, the 60, 70? Yeah field goal attempts. And, and compared to Perth, who had 42, now Perth in a fairness have got 22 field, uh, free throws, but let's just say nine of those, because you've got a few and ones in there, nine of those not coming from field goal attempts, even if you add that to their total, there's still a lot more shots going the way of the Adelaide 36ers. I have a question. Have you ever seen a game, a 40-minute game, with 90 field goal attempts? I've never seen that. And it looks like we're, we're, we may be heading there in this one. Back in the day, homicide, we used to let it fly. 
So I reckon. Daisy had maybe. the Daisy had 90 himself. I'm not sure about the rest of the team. Maybe not in a 40 minute day. Where's Coach when you need him? No, no, we, not just me, but the game is maybe. different. Well, that's a nice play, DJ. It's the most field goal attempts you ever had in a, in a non overtime game. Oh, uh, would have been high 30s for sure. <laughs> for sure. But you reeled off those stats with Ian Davis the other day, didn't yeah. you? 13 of 24, I mean, 24 three-point field goal attempts by one person in the one game. Now, that is heroic. Well, you put it into context, Pearl had 25 for today. Yeah. Two for Myers. Oh, the pass was nice for Withers. Three doesn't go down. Still unable to come up with... Three-point mid, six of 31 this afternoon. Bryce Cotton about to check in. Great defense by DJ. Johnson foul. We've just kind of done some digging. Do you remember a game in 1987 against the Newcastle Falcons where I do. He had 39 field goal attempts. I told you it was like 30s. <laughs> it also equated to 60. He had a 60 piece on the Falcons. <laughs> yeah, and anyway, unfortunately we lost that one quite uh, considerably, so it was nothing to be all that proud of. But um, but no, but was it? It was just a different, obviously a different style of play to what we see now. And the level of athleticism in our game these days is way more than it used to be back then. And what? What it does is it creates more difficulties for the offense because the athleticism on the defensive end, it, it is a yeah. whole lot harder. And let's not forget that was 48 for the game. Right. Still, 39 attempts is 39 attempts. That's a lot. Shoot the ball away, you did. You better wear the hell you like. 27 for Cock. Something lifting him at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. Two for one. Off the window, that jumps out. They're the ones they need to drop just to put some score, a little bit more scoreboard pressure on the Perth Wildcats. Right now they're coming down and with this 11 point lead, those three balls and actions that you see for the Wildcats are a lot easier with 11 point lead as opposed to a 7 point, 6 point lead. There's a trap. Let it all shuffle on the feet. And on the side. It's just a stench about this. It, it suggests that the Adelaide 36 is a world well, truly still in this. It is. Now it's time to make plays on our offensive end. Don't go gun shot. Keep them going. Keep letting them go. At some point, these threes, they're going to have to connect. Well, they're only saying in the first three quarters of their six of 31. <laughs> Don't start shooting now. But maybe other options to find it to the. Just keep that scoreboard ticking over. DJ's not going to stop. Come on, with me. Three outs. 
inside, two inside. Two on the two is making it. Mitch Creek is making it. So it's Vic Law the other? Vic Law is making it. So who's the, who's the two players on the inside if, if Vic Law and he can play the first one? Adams and Cotton. Adams and Cotton lock. That's a father, I think, isn't it? So who's really going to have an outside? Is Creek going to play the three or three? Play some three. Okay. Or okay. the four. Okay, well, there you go. Hey, there are those two. Three, three, four. Oh, huh? Hey, you cooks, man. He's in good form. We'll see the Kings up next against the Taipans on Sunday Hoops. With us with rebound number six. Meyer at the elbow. He's been carrying up top. Jumps it. Pass for Withers was nice. Law blocked him. And Withers scores. Through the bump. And one play. Adelaide just will not go away. It has been a tough night offensively for Withers. But his consistency in in the old boards he gets that block but he goes up sometimes you need a little bit of luck he does that is a great block by great Law. Block. and then it was the early rotation they they sent Majuk Majuk on that double and Bryce Cotton was there but wasn't able to get in the lane for that pass and 20 offensive rebounds for the Perth Wildcats they've got 17 defensive they're shooting it at 32 percent from the field a paltry 21% from the three-point line, but they only trailed by seven against the Wildcats, who were at 50 and from the field and 44 from the three-point line. The volume of shots has kept them in this pocket. Yes, it has. It's been a strange old game, this one. But this man is on the court. Travis, a big knockdown for the Wildcats. And then I was almost prepared to put that into the poor shot selection in the context of the game, but he steps up and makes a huge one for the Wildcats. Just showing the confidence. The self-belief in his self. He's with us. Look that time. 7 of 34 from outside. remaining at the Adelaide Entertainment Centre. Norton threw it up with the left hand. Officials might take a look at this. The original call was a Perth ball. Not anymore. We're going to review this. I think Jamie Perlman... I still want a timeout blue. Yeah. I still want a timeout. Time out to blue. I thought he was going there because he thought it was going the other way. Jamie Perlman just wants to have a chat. Ten point game. Eighty one seventy one. They're just hanging around at the moment, Adelaide. Well, the referees needed to actually got together and overruled the original call. So that's why I think Jamie Perlman that time was prepared to call a timeout to review. Correct. But then even when he got the ball, he thought, no, no, I think we need a bit of a chit-chat about this. Just says a real pivotal time. This next two or three minutes is going to determine whether the Adelaide 36s are a legitimate chance to cause what would be a, a remarkable turnaround based on the statistics. Financial sharp shot in it's an outwin.nbl.com.au forward slash Latrobe. Well, are they king in this game at a really, really crucial time as well? And he's a 40% three point shooter. That's Jamie Pearl that's reasoning. Mitch 
Carroll. Two of nine for the field. Perth get the ball back, and it's a missed opportunity for Adelaide out of the timeout, Corey. Sure is. Out of eight percentage offensive set. Good block. King knocks the floor. Good pass. Two for one. No foul call. Beautiful defense by Law. Goes straight up, hands vertical, and made a really good play to contest that shot without fouling. We've reached 80 field goal attempts in this game. Wow. Blanchfield, tip it! That's where the Wildcats find another way to put pressure on you. Crashing the offensive boards. Well, Adelaide have done a good job on the boards by and large. Here it is, Travis again goes in, misses that, just sneaks on underneath. Tad Dufamai, who's had a really good game. In fact, a career high for Dufamai with his 15 points, 4 to 10 from the field. He's also got the six boards. He's done a really good job. Time's starting to become a factor for the home team. Got to go fast. Good double team by Perth. Hook, three seconds. With us. Jeez, only just in the paint. Gee, they're, they're, they're three offensive sets since the timeout have, have not been, been ideal. less than desirable. Mm. Todd Withers comes out of the game. Timeout call. That was really good rotation by the Perth Wildcats. They run their switch up the top, they get the mismatch, but although they change Cotton and interchange him down low. With Norton, they like Norton guarding the low post. All right. Mitch here, DC here, Pick here. Okay. Hit. Now we know Johnson's on you, right? Okay. Mitch, fly off this way. Fake it this way so Johnson wings. DC's got a ball screen right there. Okay. LT, you're cutting from here. Todd, you're here. You start here. When Vic catches it here, wherever he catches it. Let Mitch go off him, he's gonna fake it, and it's ball screen. Hey, hey, press break here. You throw it in, you two in the high. Three minutes and 35 remaining. This is the first of our double header on Sunday. Hoops coming up next. The Sydney Kings will take on the Cairns Taipans. Big crowd expected again at Kudos Bank Arena, as there should be. Kings are playing really entertaining basketball. Very nice, they. Out of team in the league, games, five straight Ws. I know, and but the, the margins haven't been all that significant. Some real exciting, hearty mouth type finishes, but uh, getting the results. You know, I say. Out of team in the league, games, five straight Ws. I know, and but the, the margins haven't been all that significant. Some real exciting, hearty mouth type finishes, but uh, getting the results. More offensive putback. Boys are stuck. He just got 20 points needed. Putback. Boys are stuck. He just got 20 points there, pressure on the ball. They were able to pass out of it, I'm sorry. If you're going to double team someone and make it a numerical advantage off the ball, if you don't put pressure on the ball, they can get out of it. At this level, they're going to find the open man. As they did, got an easy layup because of it. As you heard, Scott, well, we don't want that. <laughs> no, no, no. Easy pay. 12-point game. Big Law's fifth double-double of the season. Easy. He's bounced back. He had a, a three-game skid where he did not play well. He started off shining on fire. Dropped a little bit, but he's picked it back up. What it's going to be like for Perth as players, Perth as players, and for Western Australian basketball fans on Sunday, March the 20th, yeah. when they go to RAC Arena for the first time in a long time to play host to the New Zealand Breakers. Like when they knew they were going to be away for a while, they played. I think it was the Cairns Taipans their last home game. They had 
comes from a basketball. His dad was the general manager of NBA Australasia. Phil, hey Phil. So he's been around the caper. Perth Wildcats have lost four of their last six coming into today. Fresh in body, but most importantly, fresh in minds. They come out today and give Adelaide the business on their home floor, 92 to 73. Well, no, they're a little scared. The Adelaide 36ers, they battled away and just a volume of shots, 85 field goal attempts as opposed to the uh, Perth Wildcats, 57. Now, admittedly, like I said, there were a lot of free throws, 27 free throws, but even taking that into consideration, it's still a heavy amount of uh, extra field goal attempts the Adelaide 36 has had with their 20 offensive rebounds, but just the, right from the start, you saw this stealing resolve by the Perth Wildcats to not allow head starts. As we mentioned, 10 times this season, they've trailed by 10 points in the first half, mm. and it was an area of concern, but if this afternoon's any indication, looks like they've found, whether it's their pre-game routine, whether it's something else they've gone to to figure out how to avoid that, and they did it this afternoon. Three more games on the road after this one, and they will be back at home at RAC Arena to finish the season with a bunch of home games. They're headed for the finals. It's just a question of which spot on the ladder they're going to finish, Corey. Agreed. They are a top four team. I conceded to that. <laughs> Let's get the 35 consecutive years. <laughs> it's not in doubt. Not in doubt. No more in doubt. You weren't silly enough to say that that was in doubt.